So, uh, hello all of you guys. Uh, I'm really delighted to uh, be here in front of you and thank you very much for joining. Uh, my name is Zaid Abusini. I'm an Editic Engineer Assistant in Study 56. Today, we're going to deliver uh, uh, one of our lesson plan uh, published on Scoops uh, as, an, as a response for uh, COVID-19 uh, where we were in the quarantine. So today, uh, our uh, presentation map is going to be to, to introduce Studio 56 to you and then uh, the achievement of Studio 56 then I will go to the listener plan, uh, the theoretical part of the lesson plan, then the practical, but before going to the practical, we're going to uh, discuss some of the tips on Tinkercad, how to make classes and also how to add the list of the students on Tinkercad. And then we're going uh, to uh, have a quick tour on Tinkercad then we we'll go to uh, the practical uh, for the circuit. We're going to uh, make uh, two uh, circuits. One of them is the digital piano and the other one is the speaker. Uh, then I will open just a space for the uh, for a question. So uh, let's go first of all introducing Studio 56 uh, using this video. Just let me uh, load the... Uh, Uh, share voice. Uh, how to share the computer sound? So. Downside, there is an option, share screen. So what do you want yeah. to share? Okay. Uh, the sound. Screen. So I'm now sharing the sound. Let's go. Welcome to Studio 56, a community platform and part of the Ministry of Transport and Communications Digital Use Strategy. We nurture youth as digital learners by sharpening their 21st century learning skills as they develop in an all-pervasive digital environment. We have zones that are systematically divided to fit different age groups. The activities include creating electronics, gaming, and other interactive activities such as coding, virtual reality, IoT, and robotics. These engaging, project-based workshops are centered around tackling various digital challenges. Here, youth can develop their problem-solving, critical thinking, creativity, and innovation skills. The goal of Studio 56 is to foster innovation, imagination, and creativity through the exploration of cutting-edge technologies in an inclusive and collaborative environment. With a focus on the fourth industrial revolution, we give the youth in guitar a hand on encounters that facilitate them to refine their thoughts be progressively engaged with critical thinking, problem solving, and collaboration, allowing them to become future creators of technology. Six has launched a Makers at Home campaign to respond to the current COVID-19 pandemic to support youth education at home. Six online camps to respond to COVID-19, each offering digital fabrication workshops for youth. And 70 new online lesson plans were developed and included artificial intelligence machine learning, virtual reality, and digital electronics. 1,865 online participants attended the workshops across Qatar, ranging from 7 to 18 years old. 146 online workshops to support youth education at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition to that, Studio 56 contributed more than 22 published lessons in Scope DF. Our goal is to continue spreading knowledge among the youth despite the tough times that we are going through. For more information on our work and how to get involved, please check out our website and social media channels. Goodbye from Studio 56. So here is uh, what is Studio 56. Uh, as the video mentioned, we're just a project from the Ministry of uh, Transportation and, Communica and Communication, and we aim in Studio 56 just to compare the youth of today in the 20th century 
uh, from uh, just uh, a normal consumer for technology to a creator for technology and to also introduce them to a digital fabrication of this century. Uh, now uh, for our lesson plan. Our lesson plan, as I uh, mentioned before, it was uh, a response for COVID-19 and uh, it aims uh, just to simulate uh, electronics uh, on Tinkercad platform uh, and also to introduce microcontrols to kids and to know how to uh, manage to make connection with other components. Uh, so first of all here, uh, I usually start with uh, uh, I should breaking the question after a, a brief intro. Uh, so uh, I know that all of you guys do, uh, uh, you are familiar with the computer, uh, catching time with it uh, every day, uh, play video games, watch videos, uh, play, uh, listen to music, and also do your homework and learn as we are doing today. But have you ever thought that the computer can, could have a brain or a language to communicate? Uh, for and I usually here uh, give the students some space to uh, just give their thoughts. Usually they say no, especially seven to ten, without even knowing why. Eleven to fourteen, uh, most of them say yes, and they uh, get it true. So here uh, from the uh, definition, uh, the pre-definition of the computer, the computer is just a uh, uh, device that do accept data and process. And to do the processing procedure, we need a brain to do the whole stuff. And this brain, we call it the CPU. Uh, and also the computer to have a language, not the one as we know, uh, it's uh, zero one, uh, the binary system that, so this is why it came the need for uh, some devices to convert from our language to the computer language and vice versa to, uh, from the computer to us. So this is why we need an input and output device. So I usually here just uh, reflect uh, our body uh, as we have senses to um, like hands, um, uh, noses, uh, ears, uh, eyes and all of this stuff just to interact with the environment and then our brains going to process and act upon the result of this processing. Uh, so these are considered to be input devices. So they input data from the environment to the computer and the output devices takes data from the computer the action of the computer and just show it to us on the screen as an information or printed on paper using printers and even uh, a music using the speaker and our mind just is going to uh, respond to it by translate it uh, to a something that we can understand. Uh, also here I will give the uh, students a space uh, to uh, give example about input devices and output devices. Not all of them get it through uh, especially when it comes to your speaker and mics, they always telling me that it's an output device for the mic and an input device for the speaker. I don't know why, but they usually uh, just make this mistake. Uh, also, here uh, we're just uh, going to reflect the computer stuff to the uh, a new thing that they're going to uh, learn today, which is microcontroller. So as we know, the technology is rolling up really fast and we can't uh, just uh, moves forward to catch it. So uh, for, uh, today we have drones, we have robots and all of this uh, new technology, but do you think that a normal PC could fit inside this application? Of course, no. So this is why we need a tiny computer. We call it a microcontroller. Uh, usually the kids, when they hear a micro, they tell me, yeah, that's right, micro means small, but why controller? Controller, this is because we use these things to control this stuff. So uh, a controller, so a controller here, for example, the coffee machine that you already have it inside your kitchen, it already have a computer inside and a controller or a microcontroller to control the amount of milk, the amount of water, the amount of sugar, the coffee powder to be uh, in your uh, cup of coffee, for example. And many other stuff you have microcontrollers or tiny computers inside like the TV, like also microwave and all the uh, things that these things do is to control. Uh, also usually here I give the kids space just to uh, mention some example uh, about uh, devices contain microcontrollers. They usually uh, mention all of the stuff they have in, in their kitchen, TV, remotes, uh, calculator, all of this stuff and they interact 
uh, a really good special with my controller because they're using these devices every day. Uh, also, uh, uh, here we have We have a video for them to watch at the uh, what is meant by microcontroller and also the operation happened. A microcontroller is an integrated circuit that functions the same way as a miniature computer. You can find microcontrollers in many household appliances such as TV remotes, coffee makers, microwaves, ovens, and more. Most modern microcontrollers will contain at least three key components. A processor core, which acts as the brain of the microcontroller. Program memory, which contains instructions that tell the brain what to do. And inputs and outputs for processing external data. Let's take a look at how the inside of a microcontroller works. Each worm represents an operation. The core, or chicks in this case, execute an operation while the next one is being fetched. The simultaneous fetching and execution is called a pipeline, and it is faster and more efficient than if the mother bird waited until the chicks were done eating to fetch another worm. Some worms are larger than others, and the chicks need to break them up into pieces in order to eat them. This is equally true for the word size of the processor. The larger the chick, the larger the worm it can eat in one go. And the higher the word size of the processor, the more data it can process at a time. So usually here after the video, I just give the uh, students a space to uh, tell the summary of the video. Usually they get it true. Uh, so as a summary for the video, here we have the microcontroller, as I mentioned before, it's just a miniature computer that do have three main stuff inside, the core, the memory, and the input and output to interact and do action upon uh, result of uh, processing. Uh, also the operation happens inside the microcontroller, the video just I gave a great example about a uh, mother chicks want to feed her chicks, uh, a mother uh, bird want to feed her chicks, uh, worms. So the worms in this case is going to be the instruction, which is are stored in the memory. The mother will go to the memory, takes the instruction and then go back to the core to execute it. Uh, here, uh, usually the kids uh, just uh, ask a question about what is meant by a pipeline. Uh, a, pipe my, uh, a pipeline means uh, I'm uh, right now executing an instruction, I'm, I'm also uh, fetching the next instruction. So for example, the mother chicks, uh, the mother bird, uh, are going to uh, give the instruction to the core to execute it. And instead of just waiting the, the core to finish the execution, it will go uh, to the memory, uh, fetch or take a new instruction and go back to the core to execute it. So we are saving time and making the processor a lot uh, faster. Now, uh, we usually here uh, tell the student what does the piano mean. Usually they say uh, it's just a musical instrument, especially the kids that who don't know uh, things about the piano. I just uh, faced two students that who know uh, how to play piano and they told me that the piano it's a musical instrument. It do have an 88 key. Each key is connected to uh, and a hammer. Uh, and this hammer, when the keys are pressed, it's gonna uh, just hit a string. The string is going to vibrate, and the vibration will cause the sound here. But they uh, just, uh, uh, I just asked them uh, whether if they know uh, what uh, the uh, main responsible about this sound itself. So it, it, is it just the vibration, or there's something else they told me we don't know? But they are right, they have totally right. The vibration is responsible for the sound and waves. So the vibration causes waves to, to, uh, to be produced. So uh, what really happens here, uh, uh, it's the wave. So the wave, it just came from the uh, movement of the string or the vibration of the string. So here we have a musician who just hit the string of a guitar. So as you see the, uh, the string itself vibrate and 
-hmm. During the vibration, there's a wave just happens. So this wave, it's responsible to give the sound. And each wave do have a different characteristic uh, from frequency, wavelength, amplitude, and so on. But here we just uh, want the uh, kids to understand that there is something uh, called waves uh, and uh, it's responsible for the sound. So uh, this is it just uh, a back end things happen within the piano and they don't know it, but it's physics. But they are right now knowing uh, things about physics without mentioning the word physics because nearly all of the kids just hate, hate physics. I don't know why they hate physics and math. I'm a big fan of these subjects. And uh, here we have uh, an experiment. Uh, it's the two cups and the string. Uh, they usually have it in a school to uh, just tell them uh, how the phone works. Uh, but really here we can just uh, introduce something new for them that uh, it uh, uh, shows also how the way the transmits from one side to the other. So here we have a cup and one of the students is going to joke to the cup and the other is going to listen. So what happens really, we have a cord in our, uh, in our neck here. When we speak, these cords are going to vibrate. The vibration is going to transmit to the air. The cup is going to collect all of this uh, vibration and then transmit it to the string. And it's going to go from the uh, first side of the string to the uh, to the inside of the string as a vibration uh, within the string, and then this cup is going to spread it out to our ears, to our brain, then and our brain is going to process it and understand what is meant by the sound. Uh, and then we have the component that we're going to use for today to make our. Uh, application. So we're going to use the push button, speaker, and Arduino. The push button is going to be responsible for send, sending the signal to the uh, microcontroller to tell it to make the sound, and the speaker will do the sound, and it works as I told you. It just vibrate, the membrane vibrate, transmit this vibration to the air particle, then to our ears, to understand it in our mind, uh, our mind is going to process it and translate it to something that we can do understand. So here they just learn how the sound happens and how they uh, just uh, they know the physics behind uh, sounds and also the piano how it works. Uh, and we are going to use Arduino. Arduino is just uh, a microcontroller. Here is it. It do have the three main parts, as I told you, the uh, core and also the memory inside and input and output here to interact with the component. Uh, and we have a software, the software or the program or the code which tells the microcontroller what to do. Uh, as a brief definition for it, it's just a bunch of instruction uh, sorted in order, telling the microcontroller what to do. And uh, for Arduino, we usually use this application uh, to uh, translate from our language to the machine language, which is zero one. And then we have two types of coding. We have text coding and block coding. Text coding is the way for uh, the uh, more professional way to do codes. Uh, and the block coding, it's the easiest one or picture coding as I call it. Uh, each code here, ha uh, each picture here has an instruction inside. So uh, the kids just have to uh, put them in order and the microcontroller is going to go through them one by one to make the required uh, application or the required uh, thing from the, uh, from the whole stuff here. And we're going to do that on Tinkercad. Tinkercad is just a platform that uh, that we, uh, we can use it to simulate uh, the uh, circuit. Uh, and the simulation is just an uh, imitation for uh, the real operation happens in real life. And we use simulation to save cost and also time. Uh, and this is going to be our circuit today for uh, to be simulated. Uh, I'm going to send you the uh, link on chat. And also, I will send for each one of you guys uh, a nickname 
uh, on chat privately. Uh, so uh, through this, uh, uh, I will give you just time if you want to have uh, to ask any question uh, till I send the required links to you. So here's the link. chat and also for each one of you uh, I'm gonna send the nickname so you can uh, join and also uh, do the things step by step so anyone do have any question guys So have you ever used Tinkercad before? Uh, participant can type in chat box, no problem. Whatever their answer, like uh, if you have any yes. question or you want to answer anything, you can type in the chat box. So I will share a new screen now. So have you ever uh, used uh, Tinkercad before? So they don't have the, oh, okay. Yes, for design. Uh, for circuit, have you ever used it for circuit? Yes, one's from back. Okay, so uh, first of all, this is going to be the main screen on Tinkercad. Uh, before just uh, going to the practical or for uh, how to make the circuit, uh, let me tell you how to make the classes on Tinkercad. So first of all, if you are signing in with an educator, uh, uh, educator account, you will have the option of classes here. Uh, on the classes, after pressing, you, will, uh, you can just add a create a new class. It will ask you to name the class and also uh, the uh, grade uh, of, uh, of the class and the subject. I usually use technology. Uh, then uh, to uh, just add the student, there's two ways to add student to class. There's the manual way and uh, to paste uh, a list of students. But when you paste the list of students, you, you won't have the ability to control the nicknames, the uh, Tinkercad is going to generate it uh, randomly. Uh, I usually uh, use a standard here. So for example, uh, I always use a studio uh, one uh, as a name and also as a nickname. So it could be easier for me uh, to tell the student uh, a number at the beginning of each class. And then I just told them uh, add uh, your uh, number after studio as a nickname for you to join the class. So this is uh, the most uh, the practical way for me that I use it a lot uh, as a standard for me and for all of my classes. So do you have any question regarding the classes, how to make it, if you want me to go through it again? And also for the class code uh, you have here the code for class and uh, a link for the class uh, immediately. It will just ask the kid to enter their nickname, but here they just can join from the, uh, the browser, uh, going to Tinkercad and then join using the code. They have to enter the code. And after entering the code, they will have to add, uh, to enter their nickname so they can uh, approach the, uh, the main screen here that uh, they're going to uh, use it. Uh, but uh, usually I don't give uh, links or nickname before giving the instructions for the kids because they usually just go to create a new design 
without even having any focus with me or any attention and they start doing the range. Uh, so I usually uh, uh, give the instruction and at the end I told them you have just 10 minutes to uh, complete the circuit. So uh, I can just encourage them to uh, focus on doing the circuit instead of just going and look for something else to do, especially Tinkercad, the design there are really great uh, and it attracts uh, a lot of the kids. So here after just uh, joining with the nickname, uh, this screen appears, I want you to go to the left here and choose circuits. After choosing circuit, uh, you will have two choice to uh, start learning uh, the uh, tutorial or create a new circuit. I want you to go to create a new circuit. Then here I just usually introduce to the kids uh, that here we have our working space at the middle and at the right we have the component. Uh, by default it's basic component and we have a list here at the top that we can use basic or all components and we have status option which is an already made circuit and coded. Uh, so you can just modify the circuit instead of just uh, starting from starting from the uh, starting from scratch building the circuit and also the code. So we have many example here uh, coded and also made, and just uh, you can just do the modification on it. So usually I start by just telling the kids how to do the connection uh, by using a battery, a resistor, and an LED. Uh, to make uh, a rotate for the component, you can just press R, uh, a letter R in your keyboard, or here's the option of rotation. You can use it. Uh, and to select, just to press on the component and then slide to the middle of your workspace, uh, press and release to add the uh, component, simply like this. And here we have the LED. The LED is just a device that do emit light. And uh, it has two legs. One of them is the croc, uh, which is the positive side. The anode, we usually connect it with the uh, positive side uh, or the positive terminal of the battery. And to make the connection on Tinkercad, simply just a slide to the top of the uh, bin you want to make the connection with. Uh, red square appears. After the red square appears, just to press and release. And here you have your wire ready to be connected to the other side. So just approach the other side. The same thing uh, is gonna appear, which is red square after you just slide to the top of the uh, pin. After tap it, just press and release, and here we have the connection made. And you can just change the color, uh, the wire color. Usually we use black for negative and red for the positive side. And to start the operation of the circuit, just to press the start simulation here at the top, or simply as in your keyboard it will start the simulation and uh, stop it also if you just press S on keyboard. So this is this circuit is just to show the kids how to make the connection and also to let them to understand how to choose component and how to make the uh, rotate function. They usually ask for it and uh, how to start the simulation uh, also. Now uh, we're going to uh, make another circuit, uh, also uh, to uh, introduce Arduino and to make a blink uh, uh, and to use the code section. So uh, just to scroll down on basic component to the, end, uh, to the middle, here you will have the Arduino. Press, uh, select it and uh, press at the middle of your uh, workspace, uh, choose a resistor, Here's it connected to bin number 12 and an LED again to make it blink. So as I told you before, simply to make the connection, just uh, red square appears, here it is. Press and release, make the connection, change the color. It's up, it's up to you. Uh, and then uh, always we connect negative with negative. The negative side of the Arduino, we call it GNB or ground. So cathode, is the negative side of the LED are always connected with the ground. And as I told you, we usually use black for negative and red for positive. I usually here ask the kids uh, a couple of times if they do understand the uh, how to make the connection and also what is meant by negative, 
and uh, <coughs> how to connect the resistor and why we are connecting to 12, not 11 or 10. They usually ask this question, but always the same answer. You can connect wherever you want, it's up to you, but keep in mind that your circuit should match your code. And here in the code section, we have uh, the uh, block coding at the top here and block plus text and text coding. Uh, the main advantage is that we have a block plus text, uh, which you will uh, be uh, coding in a block coding and Tinkercad is going to give you the equivalent in text coding and it's really nice for the kids to understand how uh, block codes uh, means in text code. So this is, is going to be the first step for them to understand how uh, text coding looks, especially uh, text coding is uh, a case sensitive uh, instruction and also the spelling should be, uh, not should be, must be always correct. So first of all, just to uh, make uh, our LED works, uh, we have here an instruction to tell the microcontroller what to do. We have output instruction in a blue, input instruction in purple, uh, yellow for control, green for math, and purple, uh, pink for variables. So today we're going just to use the output in blue and control in orange. In output, uh, I want just to use these two here. The first instruction is set built in LED2. I usually told uh, the student here, uh, you don't have to use this one. It's uh, just a special case uh, instruction for Arduino to make just uh, bin number 13 works. We usually use it to test the Arduino without having any component connected with the Arduino. So uh, the general instruction is the second one, which is sit pin. And sit pin means make the pin. Or make Bin, for example, here we are connected to 12, so I want you to make bin number 12, whether to switch on or off. So high in instructions mean on, low means off, or you can just tell them high means one, low means zero. So to switch the LED here, if we just select high and start the simulation, the LED is going to work. All right, but here we want to make a blink LED. So uh, we have to use the control. So we have the control uh, instruction. So uh, are you guys following me? Guys, uh, are you following or should I repeat something? Okay, good. So in control here, we are just telling the microcontroller whether to wait, to repeat something, or to add a condition, an if statement, all right? Uh, I usually don't go if, uh, if statement with kids from uh, seven to 10, uh, just the special cases, uh, to do it with them, but I always do it step by step with them. 11 to 14, they understand what an F means. So I usually do it with them to make some uh, application like intrusion alarm system. Uh, we made uh, uh, an extinguish extinguisher system. Uh, we made many stuff using uh, this instruction here. So what we want to do here, first of all, is to tell the microcontroller to wait. So here, uh, what happens is the uh, the pin is going to switch on, the LED is going to switch on, then I'm telling the microcontroller to wait for one second, then I need the microcontroller to switch off the LED, so I'm gonna choose the same pin, which is 12, instead of high, low, which means off. Now it's going to work for one second, and then off, I want it also for one second again, be uh, off. So here I'm gonna have a blink LED for one second blinking. All right. So usually here I tell the kids to make this simple circuit to understand 
how to uh, just interact with the Arduino and also to understand how to make the codes on Tinkercad. Uh, usually 11 to 14 uh, use blockable sticks to understand by their own how it looks on text coding. So this is it's just an uh, introduction for them how to use Arduino and Tinkercad and also how to use the block. So uh, uh, let me ask you just, uh, is everything clear for you or should I repeat something? Uh, do you have any question regarding this quick introduction? Uh, or should I uh, go to the next step? So I'd like to know. Okay. So now the next step is going to be to build the circuit of today, which is the uh, Arduino uh, or the uh, digital piano. So to, uh, to uh, this circuit, it's already made on Tinkercad. Uh, here we have it on starters, go to Arduino. Uh, here is it, the keyboard, tune keyboard. Okay, uh, but here we have it on just the three push buttons. So what we're going to do is just to add two more push button to this circuit. So uh, to make the G chord uh, piano, uh, the G4, A4, E4, D4, and B4 uh, octave. Uh, this is the fourth octave of the piano. So uh, let us just add the push button simply just uh, select and uh, uh, put it uh, on the printboard. Uh, usually I don't use the printboard with the kids, but in this case, uh, I told uh, I tell them that the printboard is something that we use to make our circuit much more organized and looks pretty. The printboard here, we have a horizontal lines and we have vertical lines on the printboard. So for example here, uh, the uh, row number 27, all of these points are connected together, making a one point, and the vertical line are just a one point. So we're here just uh, making uh, uh, an extender for our pin here. So if I connect seven here, that means all of these bins uh, is going to be uh, the same bin, which is seven. And if I connect seven here, all of these pins are going to be seven also. So I'm an extending and also making my circuit looks much more organized, okay? So here, simply I, I, I will just copy and paste uh, this uh, resistor, just to press Control C. After selecting the resistor Control C and Control V, you will be able to copy and paste. Connect the same side here, the uh, positive, same line, and also add the uh, <clears throat> the other push button here. Again, Control C, Control V, connect it simply like this, and from this side here to this one, and red again. Now we need to connect the push button to the, uh, the microcontroller to be an input device. So simply from this side here as the connection, just copy and paste. So here, uh, we're going to connect this side of the push button to bin number A5. All right. Uh, I want it to be gray. <clears throat> and this side here to A4. So here is the circuit completed on brown, and then we have just to modify the code, no, nothing complicated here, just also copy and paste. So simply please click, uh, right click, duplicate, and then add it to the, to the end of the code here. Then uh, simply, as I told uh, before, our circuit should match the code. So here, this button, is connected to bin number A5. Simply, I will come here and uh, just change it to A5. And this one is connected to A4 also. 
I'm going <coughs> to put A4. <coughs> so here, all of the push button working. But what shall I do uh, is just to uh, change the tunes for uh, each speaker. So each push button is considered to add or to uh, just tell the uh, microcontroller to uh, just uh, <coughs> to make an output of a different tune. Uh, on text coding, we usually uh, enter the frequency, but here on Tinkercad, they already made uh, <coughs> the uh, the equation for changing from frequency to tunes. So our tune is going to be. Uh, I'm not uh, memorizing them, so uh, I will go to the to the circuit here. I already made it. The same one with the tunes. So for the code, <coughs> the tunes are for the G is 55. So if we just show it in text, so here we have the G4 as a tune number 55 and a D4 for the tune number 50 and E4 for 52, 59 for B4 and 57 for A4. So all of these you can find them on the data sheet or just use the equation to uh, to, to con convert from to uh, from frequency to tunes. It's a complicated uh, one, so I prefer to use the uh, the sheet of the already made tunes. Let's check the circuit if it works. So here we have the G button. So when I press here, it will give me a G tune. Uh, and this one is going to give me uh, a D, and, and this one E tune, and this one for a B, and the other one here uh, an A. So I'm really bad in playing uh, piano, all of uh, or any other music. Uh, I just uh, understand how the physics and the back end things uh, uh, works, but in playing things. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not good in it. <clears throat> so the, uh, the kids usually just make this circuit and uh, I give them uh, a sheet of uh, old McDonald's uh, with an all already made uh, G codes for it uh, or not uh, the, uh, the tones uh, on each word uh, which is represented by uh, G chord. So uh, for example here, the G it's old <laughs> Old, old Mac. Sorry, it's not working because of the, uh, it's, I'm using the mouse. Uh, but here I already have it as a circuit. I already made it. Uh, it's a tune keyboard also, but the sound is really uh, uh, low quality because of the piezo buzzer. It's uh, uh, a piezo material speaker, uh, very low quality sound, and also it's very cheap. So, do you have any question regarding this circuit before just going to the other circuit, which is the speaker? Any question regarding this circuit? So they just move to the other circuit. The other one, it's the uh, <coughs> the most attractive one for the student, which is the speaker. So here, uh, it's a very simple circuit, of, uh, uh, an Arduino with a piezo buzzer. We can find both on the basic component, the Arduino in the middle and the piezo at the end of the list. Uh, as I told you, positive with one of the pin, negative always connected with the ground. We usually use black for negative and the positive here, I'm gonna connect it with bin number 11. And to add the code, just uh, use the text, use the text version. Uh, I always send the uh, these codes for the kids. So the first one is going to be uh, Super Mario, uh, the Super Mario version. 
here just this copy and paste and then just to start the simulation and the pH <laughs> Okay, uh, I will send you a link uh, on the. Uh, I will send the link uh, on chat. Uh, I already have uh, their uh, uh, five uh, five codes: one for Game of Thrones, one for Big Panther, uh, one for Super Mario, and one for Beethoven for Ellis. And the other one uh, for, yeah, I wish you a Merry Christmas. So uh, this uh, was uh, the two circuits that uh, I already uh, delivered to the kids. So uh, now uh, I will just open uh, a space for a question for you guys. Zaid Pradnya decides. So there is one question in chat. Uh, can yeah. we program the code through the Tinkercad or should we use basic Arduino ID? No, we can do the uh, whole thing on Tinkercad and then uh, just simply we can download it uh, just uh, by pressing here on the download code. When you download the code, it will be uh, on uh, Arduino uh, form. So you, uh, you just have to press uh, upload the code. It will be compiled and sent to the uh, if you are making the circuit sent to the Arduino immediately. So, uh, do you have any other question? Uh, I'm open for any other question. Uh, on Tinkercad, you, uh, yeah. you can just uh, simulate on the Arduino, but the uh, old similar, uh, you can just change. Uh, I will uh, I will do it for you. Just a minute. Let me share an Arduino form. So uh, you can see the screen, right? So here on Arduino, you simply uh, after downloading the uh, the code, after downloading the code, simply just change from the tools the board name. You can choose whether board you are using. Uh, if you are using the uh, Nano or the Leonardo, usually uh, uh, they use Leonardo, uh, Nano, and Ono. But the Ono is the most uh, spread uh, one for Arduino. And then just uh, choose the board. Usually, it uh, will be available on uh, uh, board number four or board number three, depends on your computer. Uh, then simply just to play, uh, press uh, upload or compile. First, to just develop, to uh, make a, a, a verification for the code if it's right or do you have any error or, or something like this. Then just upload it if you have a port connecting to your port. Uh, any other question? Yes, in chat box, there is a question from Nisha. She's asking, can we code on other Arduino board as well? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, all of the codes are just uh, the same contest for Arduino. Uh, as I told you, just change uh, from here the board name. So in Tinkercad, you can just use the Ono, uh, but they all similar all the codes, all the instruction, all of these things. So just ch uh, change the board name from here and the port uh, number uh, where you are uh, having your uh, your board on which port. And then just press upload and uh, it will work. But usually uh, anything works on Ono is going to work on Leonardo and on, uh, on Nano. 
but for the ones uh, which works for the uh, the mega <coughs> so if you have a mega board uh, anything works on owner it will works but the things works on mega won't work on the uh, the on the ono uh, because of the flash memory of the mega it's 256 kilobytes for the the ono it just i think uh, Six, uh, 20, 28, yeah, 28 kilobytes. I was preparing for the weekend. No, uh, on the Tinkercad, just the own. So, any other question, guys? Okay, so uh, this is, was uh, everything. Uh, thank you very much, guys. I really enjoyed all of you. I hope you uh, uh, have the most of it. Uh, also, thank you very much. Uh, and this is, is my uh, contact email, so don't hesitate to contact me or even the admin of uh, our uh, Fab Lab. So thank you uh, again very much. Uh, and have a nice day. Thank you.